Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. The National Stop the Bleed Day is happening this week. Coming up on GMA Save, we're going to tell you how you can participate and learn to save a life. Police respond to a shooting on the city's south side. They find multiple shell casings on the ground, but no victim will tell you how they found him. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. We are in the middle of May, but it really feels like June, even July. We're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is May 15th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. Happy birthday, Max! Woo! Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah Spivey. Thank you, everyone who has wished me a happy birthday on social media. I really appreciate it. Thank you to my family. They surprised me. So did my girlfriend surprise me this morning with a lot of presents, as did Sarah Spivey. Aww. Sarah, do you want to tell the people what you got? Tell them. Yeah, why not? All right, go I for it. I have a nice bottle of Añejo tequila. It was, I'm so Are excited. Are you going to make margaritas as you spend your day by the pool? We'll the see. Seat? We'll see. Okay. Añejo, Frozen margarita. Though, Añejo mm. tequila is a bit more of a sipper, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so outside right now, though, it is going to be hot today. You are going to want to find a way to stay cool. Uh, take a look out there right now. You can see that it looks like it's completely sunny, although the airport is registering mostly cloudy because of some high thin cirrus clouds out there. But yeah, plenty of sunshine. It's 72 degrees. South southwest winds at about 10 miles per hour, and it's muggy out there too this morning. Dew points are in the upper 60s. It's uh, on the mild side just about everywhere you look. 70 in Hondo, 68 in Kerrville, 68 in Rock Springs, and 74 in Del Rio. But watch what's going to happen today. We're going to have mostly sunny to completely sunny skies all day long. By noon, we'll be at 88 degrees, 98 for the high. That's going to beat the record of 96. And then tonight, a total lunar eclipse is going to occur. Coming up, I'll tell you about uh, viewing conditions and the forecast for that total lunar eclipse. And we'll highlight neighborhood views of the potential highs this afternoon in just a few moments. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Police rush to the scene of a shooting on the city's south side. When they get there, they find at least 20 shell casings and blood, but the victim was nowhere to be found. This happened around 1:15 in the morning in the 200 block of Briggs Avenue off of Kelsey Avenue near Southwest Military Drive. Now, shortly after police arrived on scene, police say someone found a nearby night clinic called saying the man was dropped off there with a gunshot wound to his leg. He was taken to the hospital by EMS. Detectives are investigating. Other top stories we're following this morning. Seven acres burned on the east side, and officials believe it may have been set deliberately. So 11 fire units and two county brush trucks racing to the scene. Now, this is just off a dirt road between or off I-10 between Dietrich and Bicentennial Roads. Now, the call came in around 6 yesterday. Crews were able to put out the flames. No homes, no businesses were damaged. Right now, though, fire investigators are working to figure out how this all started and who may be responsible. What happening this week? University Hospital will be hosting the annual Stop the Bleed Day campaign. It's a national effort with the goal of raising awareness on how to be prepared for unforeseen injuries at any given time. So the focus is teaching our community valuable skills that can be life saving in an emergency situation. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. So tell us what you know about this event and what folks can expect if they want to participate. Good morning, Sarah. Well, folks can expect to learn essentially how to keep a person from bleeding out. And I can tell you from visiting the amazing team of medical professionals over at University Hospital, all it takes is about five minutes for a person with severe injury to, to bleed out. And that's exactly why Dr. Liaoi, trauma surgeon over at University Hospital, says stop the bleed is so important. Let's throw up a graphic that shows all the information you need to know about the event that's going to be taking place this week. We know the National Stop the Bleed event will be at the Texas District Office located on 4615 Northwest Loop 410. The event will take place on Thursday, May 19th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Now it's important to keep in mind you do not need to be a medical professional to learn how to save a life and on, for, to, for more information on how to register for the event you can head on over to our website ksat.com search for stop the bleed and you'll find the information there reporting live jonathan Cotto, ksat 12 news thank you jonathan well across the nation communities are taking time to acknowledge and honor the salvation army as part of the campaign the charitable organization is hosting several events 
to raise money. All right, so just last night here in San Antonio, a benefit dinner was held, it included some star power to help bring in donations, and this comes after enduring a tough red kettle season. Lee Waldman reports. This is our second biggest uh, fundraiser of the year. The Red Kettle Campaign is the Salvation Army's biggest fundraiser of the year. Well, this is the second biggest one. The Salvation Army's benefit dinner at the Hilton San Antonio Hill Country Hotel has big expectations after last year's Red Kettle Campaign. Well, we had a pretty big shortfall, actually. We had, and during the Red Kettle season, we had a shortfall of over $100,000. Brad Mayhar with the Salvation Army explains there are several reasons why. One of the big ones, the COVID-19 pandemic. Another ripple effect of COVID it is, you know, people were maybe, you know, hurting financially, people were struggling. So, you know, it can be a number of factors. Their goal with this dinner to raise over $100,000. Who better to help us make up, you know, some of the shortfall that we had during the Christmas season than the man himself. Remember the Alamo. Henry Winkler was the night's keynote speaker, an honor he tells us he takes seriously because of the work the Salvation Army does. Here we are in this moment when the world seems to be going kablooey. Traditions are breaking down, respect is breaking down. It's scary, it is becoming very scary. Then you have the Salvation Army that lifts you up. In no matter what area you're having a problem in, there seems to be uh, a, a mission. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. All right, so if you've been to the grocery store, if you've been to the gas station, if you've been almost anywhere, you've noticed life's a little more expensive. Inflation hitting families seemingly everywhere. So what does that mean for our local economy? What does it mean for local businesses? So joining us in today's Leading USA segment is Richard Bettis, President and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, Richard. Thank you so much for taking time for us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max, and happy birthday. Thank you, yes. Richard. I appreciate <laughs> it. All right, so big picture, Richard. What have the latest inflation numbers, what have they meant for us locally? Well, you know, inflation happens when there is a strong demand and it meets a persistent short supply of goods and services, right? And so we are definitely feeling that. And um, families are feeling pinches, right? I mean, even my own family, you know, my wife and I, um, yesterday we were at the grocery store and we usually spend, you know, 50 bucks. You know, it's just her and I together to get some of the necessities. We were at $80. And that is happening all over the city in large families, small families. And so as a result, people have had to modify their spending. You know, instead of filling up their gas tank, maybe they're putting in a quarter of a gas tank. Uh, and they're definitely cutting back other spending. So it is squeezing families and uh, it is, it's a tough time right now. Yeah, I think we're all feeling it uh, personally in our families, but how are these rising prices impacted local businesses? Well, you know, on the heels of the pandemic, you know, businesses are still trying to bulk up and kind of get where they where they used to be. Um, so inflation is just another whammy on them. You know, the cost of materials, the inventory, labor has been such a challenge with people still figuring out whether they're going to come back to work or changing jobs entirely, which has caused uh, costs to rise. So it has put a real strain on small businesses. You know, they've had to modify their hours of operation and they've really had to rethink how to maximize their ability to serve their customers. So it is, um, it's an odd time for businesses as well as consumers. So I'm glad that you brought up small businesses. And we know San Antonio is home to so many small businesses, really is the backbone of our community. Are these inflation numbers only hitting small businesses or is it industry wide? There are all kinds of industries, large and small businesses. In fact, the, um, the travel and tourism industry, they are still suffering immensely. Although we've had a great spring break and, you know, fiesta and things like that, which helped to bulk them up, but still they are not anywhere near uh, 2019 numbers. Uh, and people, of course, are still warming up to the fact of wanting to travel. So uh, that they're still suffering. Uh, the automotive industry, uh, they are still struggling with supply chain issues. You know, there's a chip shortage. Uh, you know, you see any lot, pretty much uh, new cars uh, in this city, and the lots are empty. They're not able to bring enough vehicles in, and there is demand, but the ability to crank those cars out is is a challenge right now. Richard, is there anything being done to help local small businesses? There are many things being done, Sarah. You know, the city and the county have done great to help bulk up small businesses, in particular during the worst times of the pandemic. But now, uh, organizations like Lift Fund. 
uh, they're available to help uh, small businesses with uh, funding, uh, loans, that sort of thing. And then the UTSA, uh, the Small Business Development Center at the UTSA, has a great program that helps small businesses with things like developing a business plan, exploring market segments, and they can even help you do financing as well. So there are indeed many resources out there to help small businesses. But the other thing that we need is for prices to get back down so customers can get out and begin to buy. All right, Richard, I got a tough question for you. Is there any timetable for how long this inflation is going to persist? We know, you know, the Fed has said this is transitory. You know, economists have a wide range. So from your perspective, any idea? Uh, I will say that I see strong signs every single day. Uh, you know, people are coming back downtown. People are utilizing uh, the convention center, our restaurants. Um, it's hard to say exactly when, but I will say that we are on the right track. If we can get a handle on inflation uh, and people can get their confidence back, I think it's just a matter of months. Okay. Thank you, Richard Pettis. Uh, our viewers see this interview later on KSAT.com in its entirety. Thank you so much, sir. Great seeing you all. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Time now, 811, 72 degrees out. Also to come on GMSA, a graduating college student takes a chance and it pays off in a big way. What inspired her to ask the CEO of Apple to speak at her school's graduation? All right, so coming up after the break, if you've been out and about the last couple of days, if you plan to be out and about, it's hot. It's super hot. So not only are we going to check in with Sarah Spivey, but we're going to tell you how the city is stepping up, opening up the cooling centers, making sure people stay cool. Don't be fooled by the 72 degrees this morning at 811 because it's only going to keep going up from here. Sarah Spivey will have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. And hey, it's May. Happy May. It might not feel like May these last couple days. And I got to tell you, if you are out and about, it can be dangerously hot if you don't find a place to cool off. It really can. In an effort to keep residents from overheating, city officials have designated city libraries as a cooling centers during normal business hours. A decent amount of people took full advantage of the AC yesterday, and the same is expected today. That's right. So on these hot days, it is so important to stay hydrated. You know, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, all important things to be aware of, all possible health effects of these hot temperatures. Also, it's a good idea to check on your family, friends, and neighbors, especially those who live alone. In addition, extra care should also be given to those high-risk adults over 65, children under 4, and people with medical conditions. The libraries are not only keeping people safe, but also comfortable. I can take the heat, no problem, but just that I don't like when I take a shower and then I'm sweating all, all over again without doing nothing. All right, so our John Paul Barajas went to the library yesterday, talked to a lot of people. That man asked to be anonymous. So if you'd like to go to a cooling center, you can do so free of charge. Via is also providing rides for free as long as the center is still open. Now as the energy consumption uh, continues, ERCOT is also asking people to conserve energy, keeping the thermostat at 78 degrees or higher during those peak energy hours. The agency is also asking Texans to not use large home appliances like washers and dryers peak times between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. I know it's tough to do, Sarah. Yesterday I went home and I put my AC up to 77, 78. Yeah. Up until I had to go to bed. Um, but it's it's so hard to do because it's so hot outside. And it's going to be hot today too. Now here's the thing. All of those tips on how to stay cool are good tips. and. You know, if you're anything like me, I'm, I'm from San Antonio, so I'm used to the heat, right? But the thing is, we're used to this heat more so in late June, July, and August. This is an early season heat wave, and so our bodies really haven't had much time to get used to the heat yet. But today's going to be another hot one. We're going to be seeing temperatures close to 100 degrees today. And in fact, the average high temperature this time is 86. So we're going to be some 10 to 15 degrees warmer than that. And we're likely to beat a record for the day. The record high for the day is 96. We're forecasting 98 in San Antonio, so we're likely to beat that record. It'll be 100 in Hondo, 100 in Castroville, 100 in Nixon, 98 in Seguin, 99 in New Braunfels, 98 in Comfort, 98 in Kerrville, 96 in Bernie, 101 in Yavaldi. A hot 
afternoon on deck for us. Outside right now, though, it is fairly mild. It's 72 degrees. We've got some cirrus clouds out there right now, but otherwise you could see behind me beautiful blue skies. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. Elsewhere at 68 in Kerrville, 70 in New Braunfels, 70 in Hondo, 70 in Kennedy, 71 in Catula, 73 in Laredo, and 74 in Del Rio. Let's take a closer view to the metro area at current temperatures. If you're walking out the door in Helotus, it's 71 degrees and it's 68 in Bernie. Now it is muggy out there right now. Dew points are in the upper 60s, but watch what happens to the humidity as we go throughout the day. It's actually going to go down. So during that peak heating hours of the day from about uh, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Although it's going to be very hot, temperatures close to 100 degrees, we are not going to have to deal with the heat index value. So that's some positive news right there. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast, completely sunny skies by noon, close to 90 degrees. We will be in the 90s this afternoon. South winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, so not terribly breezy. We'll be topping off right near 98 degrees, 5, 6 p.m., right around dinner time and, and into the evening it's going to stay warm. And speaking of this evening, there's a big event happening, a total lunar eclipse. Now tonight it will be a bit windy with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. The eclipse will start at 928, but it'll totally be uh, that reddish hue as totality begins at 1029 p.m. If you want to stay up a little late and see that. And then totality will end at 1154 p.m. Temperatures will generally be in the 80s. It's going to be nice viewing conditions because we're going to have mostly clear to completely clear skies. And just a friendly reminder, lunar eclipse, not like a solar eclipse, so you don't need any special equipment to see a lunar eclipse. You can just see it with your naked eye and conditions will be nice for that tonight. Now looking at the satellite and radar image across a good portion of the United States, the main bullseye for severe weather are going to be where that uh, yellow box is right now. That's where we could see some severe weather across the nation today and m mainly large hail and wind events. But in our neck of the woods out across Texas. We're still dealing with this big blue bully, this ridge of high pressure. That's creating uh, pretty hot temperatures, not only for us in San Antonio, but across the southern portion of the United States. It's probably going to be 107 in Phoenix today in May. That's really a very strong heat wave out there. Now looking at the forecast for the remainder of the weekend and into next week, Tomorrow, 100 degrees. We're likely to break a record there. We're likely to break a record on Tuesday, and we'll come close to breaking a record on Wednesday. So record heat for us just not letting up in the week ahead. Windy Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Only a small sliver of a chance for rain Friday and Saturday. More on the science behind lunar eclipses coming up in the next half hour. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 72 degrees out. Still ahead, a graduating college student takes... To heart, there are no limits, and asked Apple CEO Tim Cook to give the speech at her graduation why she thought he was a perfect person. All right, we want to give a special birthday shout out to Hannah Ross. She is turning 103. Wow. This week. Happy birthday, Hannah. Happy birthday, Miss Ross. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. An awesome story to tell you about. A graduating student at Gallaudet University invited the CEO of Apple, yes, the phone company Apple, to give her class's commencement speech. And Tim Cook, he said yes, Gallaudet is a university with a 150-year history of empowering members of the deaf and signing community. This weekend, Cook made good on his word and arrived on the campus to deliver the commencement speech and met with Molly. Fanny, the tech student who invited him to speak. All right, so Molly says she was inspired to contact Cook by the Oscar-winning Apple film Coda and the Apple products that virtually helped her and other deaf students get through the pandemic. Both Molly and Cook say through technology, anyone is capable of reaching their goals. One of the, the key aspects of technology is that it should make uh, life accessible for everyone. And so what we've always tried to do at Apple is we want our products to be used by everyone. We want them to empower everyone. So while touring the campus, Cook was shown the university's Motion Light Lab, where designers created the first ever 3D avatars that are fluent in sign language. That is amazing. And you know what? Good for Molly for, you know, having the, the guts to ask him because the worst he could say is no and you're exactly. in the same spot you're in anyway. And good for Tim Cook for, you know, making good on his word.
Very cool story. Time now, 826, 72 degrees out. All right, the top of our next half hour, the latest on the deadly grocery store shooting in Buffalo, New York. What investigators are saying about the accused gunman. Plus a body found on the side of the road heading towards TPC Parkway. We're going to have the latest on that story, the latest from police. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, May 15th, and May 15th is Max Massey's birthday. Happy birthday, Max. We're going to keep bugging you about Thank it. you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you to everyone who has wished me a happy birthday so far. It really is so appreciated, and I really feel blessed, especially I walked to my desk this morning. Sarah Spivey surprised me with a gift and an amazing card. Thank you, Max. Yeah, and happy birthday. You know what? Here's some heat for you. Mm. <laughs> in fact, record breaking heat uh, for us is in the forecast, not only today, but also tomorrow and potentially the next day as well. So yeah, it's it's going to be hot outside. All right, taking a look outside right now. We've got some cirrus clouds uh, out there, but it's generally mostly sunny. It's 72 in San Antonio, 73 at Stinson, 71 near uh, Converse at JBSA Randolph, 71 in Kelly at Kelly uh, and Let's go ahead and break out the iced coffee forecast because you're going to need to find a way to stay cool today. You're going to need the extra large because we're going to be close to 100 with complete sunshine today. Winds will be from the south at 5 to 15. Here's a look at your planning forecast across south central Texas. It's going to get up to 100 in Hondo, 100 in Pleasanton, 98 in Kerrville, 99 in New Braunfels, 101 in Uvalde, and 102 for Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and Laredo. Now this heat... This heat will continue this week, as I mentioned, but there is something exciting happening tonight. A total lunar eclipse. We're going to talk about the science behind a lunar eclipse and what our viewing conditions are going to be like here in San Antonio later tonight. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a motorcyclist found badly injured along the side of 281 near Hildebrand. So this discovery made around 2 a.m. This is on 281 near Hillbrand. He was rushed to the hospital bus you, with major injuries. Now, police say it appears the victim may have been involved in a bad crash. Right now, we are still waiting for the latest information from investigators. But once we get that information, we're going to have so much more on air and online at KSAT.com. Well, the Shirts Police Department is asking the public to be vigilant as the city sees a high number of catalytic converter thefts. A Facebook post from the police department says three men are targeting specific vehicles. Those include Chevrolet pickup trucks, Mitsubishi Outlanders, and Toyota Tacomas. The suspect's vehicle is a dark gray minivan with out-of-state plates. Residents should support any suspicious activity to police. All right, don't forget early voting for the 2022 primary runoff election. It starts tomorrow. The May 24th election will decide races that did not have a majority winner during the March 1st primary. For a complete election information tutorial, including a list of ballots and voting sites, just head to KSAT.com. Well, happening throughout the month of May, University Hospital will be hosting its annual Stop the Bleed Day campaign. It's a national effort with the goal of raising awareness on how to be prepared to handle unforeseen injuries that can happen at any time. All right, so one of those events teaching people is happening this Thursday. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live with details, including how to register. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. Well, folks who are interested in this event uh, can essentially learn how to keep a person from bleeding to death. Um, traumatic injuries is actually the number one cause of death in young people ages 1 to 44. Um, and a lot of those injuries can be saved if we could get the um, injured person to the hospital in time. And so um, we will have the Stop the Bleed Day. Um, and a training event coming up and really the purpose of that training event is to help bystanders um, do what we call bleeding CPR. Now it's important to keep in mind you do not have to be a medical professional to learn how to save a life. For more information on how to register you can visit our website ksat.com. Just search for Stop the Bleed. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to that horrendous mass shooting that took place at a grocery store in New York State. Ten people dead. The FBI saying they are now investigating this as a hate crime. ABC's Rena Rory has a story. 
18-year-old Peyton Gendron arraigned Saturday evening charged with first-degree murder just hours after a shooting rampage that left 10 people dead and at least three others injured. 11 of the 13 victims were black. And that charge of murder in the first degree carries with it uh, a life without parole sentence. The horrific scene unfolding inside this supermarket in Buffalo, New York, shortly after 2.30 Saturday afternoon. This is the worst nightmare that any community can face. Authorities say Gendron of Conklin, New York, allegedly shot several people in the parking lot before entering Topps Friendly Markets and continuing his rampage. He exited his vehicle. He was very heavily armed. He had tactical gear. He had a tactical helmet on. He had a camera that he was live streaming what he was doing. He was eventually taken into custody by Buffalo police while still inside the store. According to law enforcement officials, a home associated with Gendron more than 200 miles away from Buffalo was searched by investigators. The shooter traveled hours from outside this community to perpetrate this crime on the people of Buffalo. New York Governor Kathy Hochul, a Buffalo native, says there is no depth to her outrage. A white supremacist who has engaged in an act of terrorism and will be prosecuted as such in a cold-hearted, cruel, calculating way. According to authorities, the suspect live streamed the attack as it unfolded. The FBI now assisting local authorities in the investigation. We're aggressively investigating this at the federal level as a hate crime and as an instance of racially motivated violent extremism. Investigators are looking into a 180 page document that Gendron is believed to have posted online, allegedly filled with racist and anti-Semitic rhetoric and a detailed outline of what he planned to do. Rena Roy, ABC News, Buffalo, New York. All right, other morning headlines we're following. $50,000 is now offered as a reward for information leading to the capture of convicted killer Gonzalo Lopez. Now, the reward was increased just yesterday. Lopez, a Texas inmate, escaped from a prison bus. Authorities believe Lopez hasn't ventured very far from where he escaped. They say he remains in the area of Leon County. That's between Dallas and Houston. Officials are warning the public that Lopez may be extremely dangerous and he should not be approached. Funeral services were held for the former Alabama corrections officer who went on the run with an inmate. 56-year-old Vicki White was laid to rest yesterday. Many paying their respects remembered her as a kind person who looked out for other people. Up until helping Casey White escape from jail, the corrections officer had an exemplary record of public service. Authorities say she took her own life to avoid being arrested. All right, so we know the Bucks are in Game 7 of the playoffs today. So Bucks fans, they're going to have to make plans to be home by 11 p.m. tonight. That's to make curfew. And all of this curfew, it's instituted because there was a terrifying shooting downtown Milwaukee, the last playoff game. So the mayor of Milwaukee imposing a curfew, canceling a huge watch party tonight. After three different shootings in that entertainment district in Milwaukee, as fans were watching Game 6 of the Eastern Conference semifinals. Now, video shows people running for safety. 21 people injured in these shootings. All the victims are expected to survive. Anyone 20 years old or younger has to be off the streets by 11 p.m. And former President Donald Trump made a stop in Austin last night. Trump was the headliner for this American Freedom Tour stop. Former President Donald Trump talked about a lot, including inflation and immigration, during his rally, where he urged conservative supporters to help the Republican Party take control of Congress in November's midterm elections. About 8,000 people reportedly packed into the Austin Convention Center. Joining the former president last night, his son Donald Trump Jr. and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. In your health news, it is you know, the middle of May. Days are getting longer. Trees are blooming. Birds are chirping. And Sarah Costa is sneezing throughout the podcast. <laughs> and for millions of Americans, seasonal allergies are in full swing. New research shows climate change is making allergy season even worse, allegedly. So ABC's Alex Perche explains how. Spring allergy season may leave many Americans feeling miserable. <laughs> People complain about symptoms being more intense than ever. According to a recent study co-authored by Allison Steiner, pollen season is going to get longer and even more intense as a result of climate change. We looked at how pollen was changing and tried to understand its response to temperature, precipitation, 
and higher CO2 concentrations. When we look at just including things like temperature and rain, we found that the pollen emissions increased by about 16 to 40% over the U.S. But if global carbon dioxide emissions continue as they are now, the U.S. could face up to a 200% increase in total pollen in the next 100 years. Previously published research reveals that in North America from 1990 to 2018, pollen season lengthened by 20 days and pollen concentration increased by 21 percent. Allergist Dr. Nita Ogden says existing patients are experiencing more severe reactions and there's also an uptick in new patients. That's one of the biggest things that allergists see now are people who are in their 30s and 40s and 50s and are first time allergy sufferers. So what can Americans do to protect themselves from longer and more severe allergy seasons? Check the air quality index every day in your area. You want to look and see if the pollen count is high that day. It's going to inform sort of how you wear a hat, maybe sunglasses, protect yourself from the pollen, a mask, have your medication, depending on what you take with you if you need extra. Although there are ways to mitigate symptoms, the impacts of climate change on allergy season are a cause for concern. Experts say allergies not only put severe sufferers in the hospital, but also affect people's daily lives in terms of productivity and quality of sleep. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 841, 72 degrees out. The Lars helicopter named Ingenuity may, may have made its last flight. Coming up, winter on Mars oh. made a bleep flame. All right, so Natural Bridge Cavern celebrating an annual homecoming of some little friends today. We're going to show you how you can take part in the celebration. Details next. Are you a birder? My dad's a birder. Nice. It's all about the hummingbirds. There's basically an all-year-own population in Corpus Christi, the birdiest city oh. in all of the country. Anyways, <laughs> it's just hot here. It's 72 degrees right now, but it's only going to get warmer. Sarah Spike will have a forecast when you come back. Today, live, Speaker of the House Pelosi faces George and all the tough questions. The abortion fight, the war in Ukraine, inflation, COVID funding, and the midterms coming fast. Can Democrats hold the majority? Today on ABC's This Week with George. Good morning, welcome back. So, NASA's engineers are wondering if their Mars helicopter named Ingenuity has taken its last flight. That is because winter is setting on Mars, the red planet, where temperatures, well, they they dip below negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit, a, oh little, bit, a little bit different <laughs> than us here in San Antonio. So in addition to the cold, again, negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the dust is kicking up and landing on the solar panels used to recharge Ingenuity's batteries, well, that makes it a lot more difficult. So this month, for the first time in a year, Ingenuity was unable to communicate with Perseverance, the Mars rover. NASA says even if the helicopter never flies again, they have collected enough valuable aerial data to keep them busy for years. Poor Ingenuity. <laughs> All right, so right now over on our website, hummingbirds are a welcome sight here in Texas. And the Natural Bridge Caverns is celebrating these tiny flyers with a hummingbird homecoming. Oh. It's happening today from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We've got more details posted for you over on ksat.com. And if you live in the area, have your hummingbirds out. Oh my gosh, happy birthday, Matt. Thank you, thank you. Uh, wasn't expecting, it's also a great photo. I assume that you <laughs> picked the photo. I did because um, I was looking through the photos, mm -hmm. uh, my, my photos for a picture of all three of us, and there's a trend where it's like, you take the selfie, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, in the, in the background, and Sarah's always working. Like, literally, there's a five in my phone just like this. That's funny. Well, happy birthday, Max. Thank We're you, Sarah. We're so glad that to be your coworkers, and you are a very hard worker. I would call you my friends, but that's, you know, just me. You're also my friends. <laughs> I'll be honest there. Hardworking. Thank you. Hardworking guy right there. Thank yes. you. Let's go back to Mars for a second. Okay, okay. let's go. So Mars is atmosphere. Y'all were pretty shocked to know how cold it can get. On oh my Mars gosh, time. yes. <laughs> so the atmosphere of Mars is so thin. It does have an atmosphere that at your feet, it could be like comfortable, mm -hmm. but at the top of your head, well below freezing. <sighs> Wear a hat, pack a beanie. Okay. <laughs> Today, you're gonna wanna stay cool. It's gonna be hot uh, right now outside, mostly clear skies, 72 degrees, south winds at about 10 miles per hour. You can see that we're starting off the day fairly sunny. There are some clouds out near Floresville, Gonzales right now this morning. It's in the 70s metro view here of the Alamo City. 
70 in New Braunfels, 73 in Castroville, 72 at Bernie Stage, and 68 in Comfort. Dew points are up there. They are in the upper 60s, and with those dew points in the upper 60s, it's muggy out there right now, but watch what happens this afternoon. Dew points are going to fall, and so during the peak heat of the day, we won't have to worry about much of a heat index value, so that's some good news there. Even though, yes, it's going to be hot, at least it won't be all that humid this afternoon. Look at the future cast. There's nothing happening because it's going to be totally sunny throughout the day today and hot. Here's a look at forecast highs. 99 in New Braunfels, 98 in Seguin, 100 in Castroville, 100 in Hondo, 96 in Bernie, 97 in Lotus, 98 in Kerrville, 101 in Yavaldi. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for that quick warm up here. We'll be looking at totally sunny skies and the upper 80s by noon. In the afternoon, it's going to be in the 90s. By 4 p.m., 5 p.m., we'll be hitting our high temperature 98 degrees. That's going to beat a record for the day 96. So it's going to be record hot day out there today. And then tonight, you know, it's not going to cool down all that much, but a big event is happening tonight, a total lunar eclipse. So here's how that works out. So basically the Earth casts a shadow and then the moon falls into the Earth's shadow. And as it does so, it turns this reddish hue uh, as the sun, earth and moon all align and that's going to happen and be visible tonight in San Antonio. We're going to mostly clear skies. It's going to be windy. Winds will gust up to about 25 miles per hour. We'll start to see the moon turning red by 928, but it'll be red by 1029 and totality will end at 10, 1154 rather. Temperatures are going to be in the 80s, so good viewing conditions and uh, you should be able to see it just fine without a telescope. But but if you want to use one, that would really bring some good pictures uh, for sure. Now, satellite and radar showing that there are some severe thunderstorms uh, possible across a good portion of Oklahoma, Arkansas and Missouri. But the thing is here in San Antonio, we're just going to be under the influence of this high pressure system, this ridge of high pressure. It's going to settle over Texas, not only today, but in the coming days and make it hot, especially tomorrow. Tomorrow, our high temperature is forecast to be 100 in San Antonio, and it'll be in the triple digits elsewhere across Texas, 105 in Laredo, 104 Junction area. So we are in for another heat wave this week. Record challenging temperatures today, tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. It's going to be windy Tuesday through Thursday. And keep in mind, too, that if you do happen to get a good picture of that lunar eclipse, please post them to the KSAT Connect feature on the weather app. We'll be able to show them tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be able to show some good pictures tomorrow morning on GMSA. So once again, Max, happy birthday. Here's Thank 100 Sarah. degree heat and a lunar <laughs> eclipse. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 851, 73 degrees out. Hey folks, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to be taking a look at security forces, the largest job in the Air Force and what their training looks like. Well, today we are going to be seeing temperatures quickly rise. We're going to be going up to uh, nearly 98 degrees for the high temperature this afternoon. That is likely going to break the record of 96. So it is going to be a record hot day out there. Uh, and in fact, some areas will touch the triple digits tonight. Total lunar eclipse conditions will be nice. We'll only be seeing uh, some um, few cirrus clouds out there. Totality will occur from 1029 to 1154. Other than that, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. And something also that's uh, mm. on fire. Max Massey right now because oh, it's his birthday. You. Yes, Happy thank you so Happy much. birthday, Max. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I had no idea what was happening. I saw Sarah Costa sprint out of the newsroom. I was like, she just cake. sneezing. So well, I, thank I you. I brought you a cake. Sarah yep. brought you the tequila. That's, you know what? <laughs> They're both great. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone. I see Ralph wave in the background. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you to everyone who has wished me a happy birthday. You guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Happy birthday.